doing you okay? How you doing, Matthew? All right. Yeah, right, thank you, Mariel. Um, obviously, it's been a very destructive, or destructive, sorry, Christmas period. I mean, um, just how's it been, obviously, with all the games cancelled and, and spending it Christmas at home for once, really, I suppose? Yeah, I mean, it's not obviously been <laughs> ideal in terms of not having the games. Um, I, I mean, although it was nice probably to have a few days at home with the family and stuff like that, but, um, you know, in terms of preparation for us moving forward, um, it's not obviously been ideal, but it is what it is. Um, you know, we're not in control of the situation as as such. Uh, we've just got to get on with things and be ready uh, for when the games do come. And you know, they're going to be coming thick and fast now through January. And we've got you know a couple of games to catch up on, so uh, should be plenty of game time for for everybody. Speaking to Sonny Bradley in the week, he said the players who have been able to train have still kept a good level. So I hope you haven't lost too much going into these games that are coming up. Yeah, I mean, obviously training training levels have been. Have been great throughout, and uh, you know we've had a practice game and stuff like that. So we've managed to have a little bit of minutes in our legs, but um, you know you can't beat that match um, repetition. And you know obviously no game for 29 days is is quite a, a you know a large a large amount of time without playing the game. So um, yeah, the, the guys are here, here and they're fit and you know raring to go. So um, you know it'd be a nice uh, nice game to start into in on Sunday. Okay, so how are we see on the weekend? They're going to come. Uh, looking for an upset kind of a throw but I guess the aim is to, to get through and, and not be one of the shocks of the round yeah absolutely uh, these sort of games you know uh, when you're playing against a team who's an underdog you just got to do things professionally and, and, and for it you know you just got to approach it in the same mindset um, as you would any other game um, and like you say it's going to be obviously um, a big game for, for them they're going to come you know with the tails up and, and try and cause an upset you know we've got a Obviously, be professional and do the, do the job and, and get into the next round. You know, it's all about progressing and, and going as far as we can in this competition. In your own career, have you got any, any good memories of the cup? I think you, you scored at Arsenal at Birmingham and went quite far with them one, once here. But um, what's your sort of other, other best memories of the competition? Um, over the years, I suppose. I mean, I think the quarters is the best I've done. Really, I think we lost to um, to Bolton uh, when I was at Birmingham in the quarters. Um, but other than that, you know, probably pretty much not not got any further than that really. Um, not really had had many big big ties as such. I had one, at, you know, like you said, said, you alluded to earlier. Then when I was at um, Cardiff, we played Arsenal at the old Highbury, which was a special game. Uh, we lost two one, but um, we gave a good account of ourselves in the day. But that was a um, good moment to play at Highbury. It was the last last cup tie ever to be played at that ground as well. So that's a little bit of a, a little bit of history there. Um, big fan of the competition, though. Yeah, absolutely. I think you know it's such a renowned and respected competition worldwide. It's you know it's, it's steeped in history, and and you know for teams who are not in the league who get to you know compete in this competition and the fairy tale stories, it's there every year. And there's you know there's one every year, isn't there, I suppose, with, with a team who who sort of makes it past uh, you know into the to the big big draws as they say, get to the third round, and you know hopefully you can pick a plum plum drawer. And um, yeah, I mean obviously the history of the competition is there and. Um, yeah, it's, it, I just think it's like you say, it's a magical competition. What does it produces that that sort of uncertainty when you know an underdog's going to a bigger team and you know everyone's looking through the fixtures and thinking, right, where's the potential banana skin? And you know, as a, as a club who you know um, have a fixture against a lower league opposition, you've just got to make sure that's not you. Uh, you've got to be professional, like I said, and just uh, get, on, get out there and do your job, really. I guess if the club can go far, it'll increase the number of games, which obviously for the squad, everyone wants to play. To, to get some games on, yeah, absolutely. I mean, like you say, the, the further you go, the more games there is, and and the better chance you've got of progression, progressing deep into the in, into the um, into the competition. Look, we're under no illusions that we're going to win this competition, but it's something that we would like to take serious and, and would like to progress in. So, um, yeah, the challenge in itself is that really to see how far you can go, and you know, hopefully, if, you, if we can get a you know being underdog and get a, a good um, draw in the, in the latter stages. Um, then that would be perfect but I mean in terms of getting through this game you just got to take every round as it comes I guess and, and like you say build build, build up obviously minutes for the players who have not met necessarily had, had many minutes or um, have played as much as they like so it's an opportunity for those guys to stake a claim for their, for their positions as well I mean on your time doing it so far have you found it a little bit frustrating in terms of maybe not getting the amount of minutes that they could personally wanted as well uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've, you know, I've had some minutes here and there, but you know, and, and filled in when as and when. But um, yeah, it has been a little bit of a frustrating um, sort of time as such because I've always been used to playing. You know, every every sort of club I've been at, I've, I've played majority of the games. But you know, as I'm getting older, and, you know, a little bit 
wiser. I sort of see the role I'm doing on and off the pitch as well, which is what I was brought in to do. So I'm under no illusions in terms of I thought I was going to come and play every game. Uh, not at all, but um, yeah, I would have liked to play one or two more games, of course, because you know when you're fit and, and healthy, you, you, you know you've got the appetite to play football, um, and that's not changed with me. But you know, I'm just being patient and just waiting for the opportunity, and when it does come, then then I hope I can I can take it and give a, a good account of myself. And there's, there's a thing we're adjusting to, as you mentioned, playing pretty much every weekend and knowing you get 90 minutes. So to, to to not having that kind of buzz, take a little bit of just adjustment to, to get used to doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, as a player, you want to play every game, and if you're, especially if you're fit and you know you've got no injury niggles or anything like that, you you know you, you're looking forward to the weekend. And when you've been used to playing every game, you know for so long, it is quite difficult to step back away from it and and, and play a, a minimum role. But um, you know it, it's something which happens, and it's a transition, like you say, uh, which does take sli- you know a slight adjusting to, and um, you know you've just got to find a way of of, of dealing with that situation and. And, and helping the cause and looking at the bigger picture, you know, like you know, the bigger picture for us is is this football club moving forward. Um, and the manager obviously seen my qualities on and off the pitch uh, enough to trust me to, to sign me in the summer to help do that. Um, and whether that is going to be you know playing games or whether that's going to be being in and around the squad and being that senior pro, what sort of helps um, in the changing rooms? Then then so be it. That's the role. Um, what I will be going into in terms of as your career is winding down, um, you know, so it's something that, like you say, it's a transitional period, which, which maybe takes some getting used to, but it, it, it happens to everybody, I guess, at these last stages of your career. And how impressive you've been with Elijah Bay. I mean, he's obviously scored, he's at the double figures now. Um, he's, he's proving a, a real big player for the, for the team so far this season. Do you have much of a role sort of helping him, giving him tips at this stage of his career too? Yeah, I mean, obviously, me and Elijah, we're, we're really close in terms of stuff like that. Uh, I try not to force things on him as, 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 as such, you know, in terms of saying, you know, do this, do that. I mean, Elijah's really good, he's good as gold, he's got such a good work ethic and a great attitude and application, so he, he'll naturally ask things anyway, my opinion on things and, you know, what do you think to this and what do I think to that? And I, you know, I sort of, I say it as it is and, you know, he's got such an appetite and work ethic in terms of wanting to better himself. Um, and improve as a player personally um, that it, it just comes normal just normal conversations but he does a lot of work in, in terms of what the management uh, staff do with him you know the gaffer and, and, and Chris and Mick and stuff like that so he's got a lot of a lot of people he can lean on and sort of ask um, questions of and you know look at, look back at clips he does a lot of work with um, with Chris Cohen looking at his clips and looking at his game how he can improve and what areas he can he can sort of um, you know, get a bit, a bit more of an edge on, and um, you know some of the work he does in the afternoon, which probably not a lot of people see. He, you know, comes in in the afternoon, the gaffer will take him for sessions in the afternoon, which is you know he's got the appetite and desire to want to get better and improve, which is it's a breath of fresh air to see someone at that age now in this day and age in terms of where football is with younger players. He's got you know such a good appetite to work and to improve. It's it's nice to see. How good Chicky can be as well, because I mean. Uh, people have said the top flights and, and there's rumours that other clubs are interested in him but just how good do you think he can be as a, as a player too? Yeah absolutely I think he's just got to remain focused and keep his, his feet in the ground and if he does that he's got a great chance of going all the way I think he could he's got all the attributes what it takes to play in the top flight um, whether that's with this club or whether that's with another team um, that'll be up to him how far he goes will be up, up to him his and, and, and I suppose luck and timing and things like that but um, he's definitely got the attributes to, to play at the top level um, he probably needs you know, a little bit more at this level before he takes that step. But I think when he does take that step, I think he'll take that step quite comfortably. As, play, as players, how great to see uh, McCarthy come back as well uh, this weekend. I know he's such a massive character in the place, so it must be good to see him come back. Yeah, it's nice to see Mick in, in, in a good, you know, a clean um, bill of health. And it's nice to have him around again. And, you know, it's, it certainly was missed whilst he wasn't here. And just having him here around, it's just giving the place a little bit more of a of a lift and it's nice to see him with a smile on his face and you know back out on the training pitch and you know took a little bit of the session this morning and stuff like that so it, it's, it's good news for the football club and obviously for Mick and it's you know it's a nice feeling to see somebody you know who's is so respected at this football club come back and you know he's ready to contribute and, and give everything again. And, and Nathan Jones a new long-term contract for him you spoke really um, well about him when you joined the club I mean so has he, has he carried on and been just as impressive as you thought he would be? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the gaffer's been he's been brilliant with me personally, and I can see the effect he's had on the group since I've been at the football club. And it's no surprise that the club have, you know, have tied him down to a longer term contract because you know 
he's the man to lead this club forward. Um, you know, his, his affection and love and passion for the club and, and for football as a whole is, is incredible. And, you know, he is a little bit, at times, he'll probably admit it himself, <laughs> he's a little bit intense, but that's his work ethic and that's his style. And he, he's, a, you know, he's a winner, he's a leader. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's good news for the football club, but they can manage to tie him down and hopefully the club can keep progressing forward. And, you know, he's got a vision and a long-term goal, uh, which matches the clubs, which is which is really good. So it's good what you know the club and the manager are on sync with things, and you know everything seems to be going smoothly. Awesome, thanks for coming. No worries. Cheers. Thank you very much. Oh, Hector, do you want to go first? Oh, thank you. So, yeah. Oh, hi, Cameron. Thanks for your time. Oh, just a, yeah, a couple of quick ones. I mean, very nice words from you about about sort of Mick being being back there. Really, I, I just I know you haven't been at the club sort of that long, but he's it's, it's, it's obviously a bloke that not only is there's huge warmth to him from the people that are there, but he's probably his pictures around the place and stuff, isn't there? He's just somebody that is embedded in the history of the club. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, people like that, you know, you know, Mick, Mick will have a role here for life um, as long as he wants it, you know, and. It, it's nice to see, you know, football club having that then sort of people involved still in football in terms of everything he did as a player, everything he's done as a manager. I mean, Mick's probably done every job here, you know, he's probably <laughs> at the football club, which is is fantastic, and it's you know, it is a breath of fresh air when you have clubs who show that little bit of loyalty to you know to to people who have done so much for the football club, but for the club to then go and be able to give something back, and for Mick to be a part of it, it's, it's brilliant, and obviously, you know. With his health and stuff like that, the things what he's been through, it just shows a fighter what he is. And you know, he's back here and he's on the training ground. He's even telling me today about my left foot. He's like, you know, I've seen you do this with your left foot. You know, you need to do this. I need to do this and that. And you know, you're never too old to learn. And you know, obviously, Mick was a top striker himself. So to to sort of have him back, you know, in your ear again, you know, it's, it's like he's never been away. Yeah, no, but I suppose you can't really argue with someone who's had that sort of experience of you if, they, if they're pointing that out, I suppose. No, absolutely. You know, it's the same with, with Paul Hart as well. You know, Hart is the same. Uh, you know, and the, the lads respect their input and, and their opinions, you know, for everything they've done in the game, you know. And even for someone like me at, at my age, you know, if, if you know someone of that else speaking to you, you're going to listen still, you know, and it's that little bit of respect. And, you know, with people who have done that, so much for the game. It's nice that they're still involved in the game. Yeah, brilliant. And then just one final one from me. You, you were talking a little bit earlier about your, your FA Cup experiences. I suppose it's almost, you, you remember the ones that are, are good where perhaps you with a, a slightly smaller club did well, but the flip side of it, isn't there, is when you're the bigger club and you you, you slip on the banana skin. Have you ever had any of those where you sort of come unstuck in the, the sort of were bad, bad FA Cup days? Um, no, I haven't actually, to be honest with you. We've always sort of had like draws against equal sort of opponents, so almost like a flip of a coin game or um, we've generally done quite well in terms of, you know, if we was a bigger team slightly, we've you know, drawn an underdog, potentially um, banana skin, we've sort of got past that and got to the stages where, oh, okay, if you lose and you lose to somebody, you know, of a similar yeah. ability or same division, it's not, not as bad, but, um, you know, you, you never want to be that team, do you? You never want to be that team and I suppose, People were looking at a championship club against a league league two club. Potentially they could be a banana skin. Obviously those guys not having a game for so long and um, all that sort of thing and the disruption we've had over the Christmas period. So, you know, Harry will probably, and rightly so, be coming here and saying, you know, there's nothing to fear. But obviously we've got to be professional um, and get the job done and make sure our, our, our name's in the, the, the hat for the next round of the cup. So you've never, you've never really, say, in this position, Championship side at home to a League Two club, you've never really come unstuck in that kind of situation. No, never, never. Um, that, and it's probably a good thing to be honest with you. And and hopefully it doesn't repeat that on, on Sunday. But you know, like I said, these games are about application and attitude. Um, you know, they're going to come here full of confidence, wanting to cause an upset, and we've just got to make sure that doesn't happen. You know, we want to progress in this competition. It's something we're taking seriously. Um, I'm sure the manager spoke about that. Um, he hasn't spoke about that to the players, and I don't think he really needs to speak about that. To be honest with you, as a player, you know that. Look, this is an opportunity for us to progress in the competition. Okay, we're probably not one of the favourites to win it, and we're probably not going to win it. But we want to go as far as we can. We want to test ourselves. We want to be an underdog. We want to go to another, you know, to a bigger team and cause an upset there, and show how good we are and what we're about at this football club. So I think if you approach it in the right mindset with the right attitude, then there's no reasons for us to come unstuck. Brilliant. Well, thanks for your time. Good luck Sunday. Cheers, thank you very much. Uh, hi Cameron. How are you doing, you alright James? Yeah, not too bad. Uh, 
with you being one of the more senior members of the squad, um, have you been able to relay any experiences you've had playing in the FA Cup to the younger players ahead of Sunday? Uh, to be honest with you, because of the disruptions we've had, there's not been much time to talk about the cup. Obviously, we know we've got a game. Um, obviously, we've been in training this week and just preparing for the game. But in terms of um, talking about experience and stuff like that, not not really as such. Um, you know, obviously, just the boys are just are raring to go. Really, I mean, it's been you know quite a long time since a lot of the the players had a game. Twenty nine days against Fulham, I think it was the last last game at Kenilworth Road. So um, yeah, the guys are just excited just to get going. Really, and obviously, we've got a big a big um, couple of weeks coming up in terms of some of the rearranged fixtures in that so I think it'll just be an opportunity for the lads to, to go out there and and, um, and have a game really and you know obviously it's, it's it's the magic of the cup we don't want to be on the, the wrong end of a of a bad result so uh, yeah I'm sure everybody's you know preparing in their own little way but uh, making sure we're professional and, and get this job done and like you mentioned it's been it's been your first game for 29 days is it nice to know that it's an, it's an FA Cup game, such an iconic competition, that it's nice after such a long period away from playing, and how difficult the situation is being in the club. How nice is it that you can go into a, and play a cup game, being the first game back? Yeah, it's nice, but I mean, like you say, you've, you've got to approach it as the, as the same as it, as it is a league game. It's, it's a competition we want to take seriously, so we can't approach it half heartedly um, because that's when we will come and stuff. You know, if we've got two or three players. Just thinking, oh, it's an easy Aussie game. It's Harrogate. It's a League Two team. You know, we're at home. We're the favourites. We're better than them. We should win. We can't approach it like that. That's the wrong attitude to approach it. If we do that, we'll be out of the cup. So, like I said, we've got to be professional. It's a, it's a game. It's an opportunity. The manager might change, the, change the team. One or two players might get a chance to, to state their claim, and that's what it's about. You know, it's about us getting into that next round of the cup. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll be re- reiterating that to the boys uh, come Sunday. Look, this is a competition we want to take seriously. It's an opportunity for us. It's a winnable game at home. You know, make no mistake about that. So, you know, I expect us to go out there and put in not just a good performance, but a professional performance and, and be in the fourth round. And you mentioned that you've never been in a situation where you've slipped on a banana pit. You've spent a lot of time in your career in the like, top divisions. How important was it to get that message across to everyone in the team? Don't slip up. We have to see this game out like you're saying you take it very seriously but how was it always important to get that message across to the other players yeah I mean I mean I remember when I was at Stoke we knew that we we had Tony Pillis as the manager and that was his biggest message don't approach this game with the wrong mindset and the wrong attitude because if you do you'll be out and that's, that's it don't be that upset don't be the banana skin you know where everybody's talking about you in the back pages and for the wrong reasons, you know, you want to people be talking about the game for the right reasons. How professional they was, did a good job. They went to the next round, you know, they, they, they stamped their authority in the game, they showed their quality, their class, all those sort of things. You want you want people talking about it for the right reasons and not for the wrong reasons. And um, the, the the squad's really good here, so the lads are under no illusions that you know this is an easy game. Um, I don't think anybody will be approaching it in in the wrong sort of mindset. I don't think the manager allows that here, and it, it, it certainly is not crept in since I've been here. So I can't see that approach from, from us, certainly, anyway. We'll approach it with the right way. And if we get beat, we'll hold our hands up and say, look, we've got beat. But I definitely think, you know, application um, will be spot on and attitude will be spot on. Uh, final one from me. But you've played in the FA Cup for most of your career. But what is so special about the FA Cup? Is it the fact that it's potential for giant killings, the fact it's such a national widespread competition? Just what is, what makes this competition so special? I think all those things, I think the history of the, of the competition, how long it's been going, like you say, you get, um, it's so widespread in terms of teams, you know, from non-league, they get to, you know, participate from an early, early stage and if they can, you know, get through the rounds, then potentially they get a bigger team and all those sort of things. So I just think, and especially, I think it's around the time of the year, it's that as well, around Christmas, New Year, it's always had that extra little edge to the competition and I think, you know, with the potential of banana skins like everybody says upsets everybody's just you know excited and almost like not an edge but you, you're looking for it out you're looking at the fixtures going you know could could they potentially you know lose to them could they potentially cause an upset at home to them you know you don't want to go away to a you know a stereotypical you know non-league ground where the pitch isn't so great and you know the weather's a little bit cold and all those sort of things so I think that adds that little bit of excitement and that uh, it draws people in a little bit you know potentially to see to see um, you know a, a lesser side as such 
you know, potentially be a, a bigger team. And he's been plenty of those throughout the years. <laughs> okay. Brilliant. Thanks so much, Cameron. Good luck this Sunday. Cheers. Thank you very much. Okay, I've just got one one question, if I may, guys. Um, happy New Year to you, Cameron. Happy New Year, Barry. bro. Luton's Urban Radio. Uh, just really quickly, uh, we don't see a lot of you, obviously, playing for Luton. We all know your name, Cameron Jerome, from back in the day when you were banging them in for different, different high-level clubs. What's your... Your, your role now I mean I know you're you're 35 years of age um, you've talked yourself about you know it being slightly different from it was before in terms of your attendances are you giving a lot to the team off the pitch as well it sounds like you are yeah I'd like to think so in terms of you know being around the players as you know talking to the guys um, you know being that sort of senior player in terms of in the dressing room um, yeah I mean obviously I'm training every day I'm trying to keep the standards of training high. Uh, obviously, trying to keep myself, up, you know, my standards, my own personal standards, what I set myself, uh, my availability and stuff like that. So all those sort of things, I think they they, they come quite natural as a senior player anyway. Um, and obviously, it's something what the, the manager was keen to add in the summer in terms of that little bit more experience to a younger squad, which we did have here. Uh, and he managed to do that. He brought in you know people like myself and Henry Landsberg and stuff like that. Albeit Henry's played a little bit more than me. Uh, but also it's, it's testament to the, to the guys in front you know Harry Cornick until his injury you know performing really well level of performance from Elijah Adebayo really well um, and obviously the manager's got a few of the younger players who he's brought in who have got you know high potential as well and um, they've not managed to, to cement their place in the, in the side as, as, as of yet so um, I just think it, it, it's, a, it's a number of factors obviously it comes with your age and obviously not just your age in terms of you're getting old but you know I didn't I wasn't expected to play as many games, you know, in, in myself. Um, I've played one or two. I probably could have played a couple more, but maybe that's down to me as well. Maybe I need to sh- show the manager a little bit more. Look, I'm still here. I'm still hungry, uh, regardless of the situation or my age or, the, you know, the the form of other players. I've got to maybe push it in training a little bit more to, to force the manager's hand to say, you know what, you know, comes, you know, training at a really high level and, you know, he's, he looks hungry, he looks ready to play again. So, yeah, it may be something what I'm not doing, what I need to look at and, you know, speak to the coach and stuff about. But at the minute, you know, um, I'm happy in terms of how things are going, um, what I am contributing in terms of on and off the pitch. And, you know, I know there's plenty of games. Uh, it's a long season. It's a 46 game season plus cup competitions. So maybe Sunday, if I get the nod, it might be an opportunity for me to put myself back in the manager's thinking.